The following program is being brought to you on the 7th Wave Network. For more information about our network and to check our additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit 7thWaveNetwork.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit VoiceAmerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the following program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management. Welcome. You've entered the realm of 1111 Talk Radio. Your host is Simran Singh. It's time to discover your own language with the universe. Learn to empower yourself, broaden your mind, open your heart, and discover who you are. Now, here's your host, Simran Singh. The greatest gift we can give ourselves is freedom, the ability to feel connected to all things without being affected by them. It is that moment of soaring through life unencumbered and present, knowing the space that we take up and allowing others to be within that space that we don't have to lose anything. Oftentimes we don't realize that our emotions are also part of that right to freedom. Today's guest is Dr. Judith Orloff, the international lecturer and workshop leader that has written wonderful bestsellers such as Positive Energy, Dr. Judith Orloff's Guide to Intuitive Healing, and Second Sight, and now having released her latest book, Emotional Freedom. Welcome, Dr. Orloff, to 1111 Talk Radio. Thank you. It's great to be on your show. It is a really, really wonderful book and, and speaks, I think, to many people because most of our lives we end up spending trying to figure out uh, how to access our own emotions and how to uh, handle others' emotions. Oh, yes, most definitely. I wanted to write emotional freedom not only um, as a path to psychological understanding but as a path to spiritual and intuitive awakening. As I'm presenting emotions as a path to awakening and these energies called emotions, we can learn to transform, and that's what, you know, I'm teaching in each chapter of the book how to work with the unique and, you know, kind of exquisite energies of, of difficult emotions such as fear, how to transform fear with courage, how to transform frustration with patience, you know, what the energies are of each, you know, to be able to sense intuitively what the energies are and work, work with that or how to transform loneliness with connection or how to transform jealousy and envy with self-esteem. So I look at these difficult emotions as spiritual challenges to us in my own life and with patience, and, and that's the premise of the book. And so many people, they, they experience all of those things, but there are a lot of individuals that feel very locked in those places and don't realize that they can transform an emotion from one thing to another. They, they sit there and feel like they have to live in it or be stuck in it. Right, exactly, and, and that's why I wrote the book, to give people strategies uh, to begin to work with these emotions in themselves. I mean, certainly I'm a big believer in psychotherapy or spiritual psychotherapy and, and getting guidance, but there is so much we can do to work with our own emotions in ourselves, which is so empowering when we do it, but you can't just do it from a traditional point of view. I'm a psychiatrist and I'm also an intuitive, and so I work with traditional medicine which is my training at UCLA and in USC, but also I tap into the unseen realm, which has to do with sensing energies and spirituality and intuitive medicine. You know, how do we apply all that to transforming emotions? You know, this is the great challenge and inspiration. And I think people get stuck so much because they view difficult emotions as just drudgery rather than the spiritual challenge that they are. You know, as difficult as they are, I mean, they are intense. Depression can be intense. Fear can be intense. I know. I mean, I've written about my own experiences with each emotion in the book so that I can share how I've worked with them. And I know it's not easy, but, you know, to me, you know, I, I think, well, so what? It's not easy. You know, not, you know, very rarely is, is something worthwhile easy. I mean, sometimes it is. Sometimes it is. But, you know, the the point of being alive is to transform our souls 
and to develop spiritually. And here we're given these opportunities in these bodies of ours, these precious temples, to learn how to work with what we're given here. And part of that is working with the emotions. Well, and I like the fact that you bring so much spirituality and intuition into all of your work because so often people get wrapped up in those loops in our minds that that keep us in a certain place. And we tend to, with that linear mind, want to figure things out, want to make sure that we understand exactly why certain things are happening. And sometimes it's not the linear mind where that has to be accessed. Exactly. And the linear mind, what the linear mind says about fear or depression or anger is, you know, I don't want to be experiencing it. You know, this is uncomfortable. I want it to go away. All right. But what the intuitive mind says is, wow, this is an impetus to help me grow. I mean, this is a powerful energy. I mean, you have to get a little bit of a witness state going with all of these emotions. Go, whoa, you know, fear is really powerful. Look at how it's imprisoned millennia of, you know, of, of people on the earth for, for you know, forever. You know, but that's our great challenge. How do we transform fear? You know, who cares what happened in the past? We're the new paradigm. You know, we're the ones who can change everything if we work with it that way. So that's oh. why it's so exciting to me. Oh, absolutely. And one of your quotes in the book is, Spirituality is freeing because it means opening the heart and doing your darndest to see every nanosecond of existence through this aperture. We are here today with Dr. Judith Orloff, author of Emotional Freedom. She's a board-certified psychiatrist and an assistant clinical professor of psychiatry at UCLA and has written amazing other books such as Positive Energy, Dr. Judith Orloff's Guide to Intuitive Healing, and Second Sight. We'll be right back in a few minutes and discuss a little bit more about intuition, dreams, and sleep. Your online community for positive change. Seventh Wave Network. We all want peace. We all desire a more meaningful life. We work hard to achieve these things, but at what avail? The key is authentic living with Andrea Matthews. Andrea will interview some of the great spiritual experts of today and will provide wisdom to help you raise your consciousness to the level of your own I am. Your authenticity can give you miraculous gifts, but you have to know how to get there. Listen for Authentic Living with Andrea Matthews. Heard live every Wednesday afternoon at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Pacific Time on the 7th Wave Network. Have you seen 1111? Do you wonder why certain numbers keep showing up in your life? 11, 111, 22, 33, 444. People all over the world are seeing 1111 and learning the language of universal communication. Subscribe to 1111 Magazine today. www.1111mag.com 1111 Magazine is a bi-monthly print publication that offers a rich, multi-sensory experience. As you engage with experts and topics of consciousness, become enlightened, empowered, and energized so you live a passionate and authentic life of conscious choices. 1111 Magazine, a daily staple for lifting the mindset, discovering the heart, and stepping into conscious living. 1111 Magazine. Order now at www.1111mag.com. 1111mag.com. Mom? Dad? How long should I wait for you? Mom? If I'm at soccer practice. What if something happens? Will you come get me? There's no reason not to have a plan in case of a terrorist attack. Mom, if you're not home, should we go to the neighbor's house? And some extremely good reasons why you should. Can you tell me? Everybody should have a plan. Take five minutes to talk about where you'll meet and how you'll get in touch with each other in an emergency. For other things you can do to be prepared, visit www.ready.gov. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security and the Ad Council. The new home for visionary positive change. Seventh Wave Network. You are listening to 1111 Talk Radio. If you'd like to join today's discussion, please call in toll free at 1 866 472 5795. Again, 1 866 472 5795. 
You may also send an email to info at believesc.com. Now back to 1111 Talk Radio with Simran Singh. Life is a remarkable journey where we are allowed to embrace more happiness, peace, and mastery over negativity, more than we've ever possibly known. The ability to achieve such emotional freedom is closer than you think. Today, the guest is Dr. Judith Orloff, author of Emotional Freedom, and we are now going to go into the topic of intuition. There are many people that access that on a small scale and other people that have learned how to connect to that intuition. Dr. Orloff, I noticed in the book a lot of the intuitiveness can start with stages of sleep, with accessing dreams. How does this work? Yeah, so I have a chapter on dreams and sleep as revolutionary states of consciousness because that's what I believe that they are. Every night we have a chance to tap into our intuition and our deepest inner knowing every night. (laughs) So that's quite a lot of opportunity And unfortunately, people who are just in their linear mind don't see it as an opportunity and they miss out. They think they're just sleeping and resting, and which which we are, but there's so much more going on once you close your eyes because then the ego and the linear mind quiets down and you have access to these amazing intuitive states. And so in uh, Chapter 3 of the book, I talk about um, how to... Um, go to sleep and, and not have insomnia. You know, I have a lot of tips for that, but also how to ask dreams for answers about emotional dilemmas that you're going through and techniques on keeping a dream journal. And I've, I've had one since I've been a little girl. I keep them piled up in my closet, you know, years and years of dream journals. You know, first thing in the morning, I always write down my dreams when I wake up. Well, and and it's powerful because there are a lot of people that suffer with insomnia or have difficulty sleeping, and you list as one of the emotional action steps to learn the stages of a person's sleep cycle. And that allows us to access more of our emotions? Well, well, number one, it's important to gain emotional freedom is to to learn how to get a good restful night's sleep. You know, that's number one. And so I go through a number of tips on how to do that, but one in particular where there's a diagram in the book of the delta brain waves of sleep, which are the deep waves where you sleep the deepest and get the most rejuvenating rest. And so if you have insomnia or if you have difficulty um, falling or falling asleep or when you wake up in the middle of the night, what you do is you just look at this diagram. You can copy it from the book and you put it by your bed or just get it out and before you go to sleep, just very in a very relaxed state, look at the diagram of the delta brain waves of sleep, the deep brain waves of sleep, and this will entrain the brain to go there. And so it's a, it's a brain training process so that you can go right into the deepest, deepest form of sleep. Now that's a very helpful hint for people who have a hard time actually making the transition from being awake to being asleep. You know, and part of that transition involves surrender and trust, and knowing that all will be well when your linear mind isn't guarding everything. You see, there's a lot of interesting issues that go into falling asleep, you know, such as fear of death also. Um, people who have a subliminal fear, many people that the letting go that happens during sleep, they have a fear they're never going to come back again. And they have a fear of death that when they do die, making the ultimate transition that there's nothing there. <laughs> sure, and when we sleep, we actually subconsciously we are working through some of the issues that we have. But when you bring about that topic of fear, you have in the book a fear quiz of how fearful am I. And sometimes that's a very good place for a person to start because many of us don't really acknowledge where our fears lie. Oh, yes, that is the place to start. And with each emotion and each chapter of the book, I have a quiz so you can determine how afraid you are, how jealous you are, how lonely you are, how angry you are. And when you go through these quizzes, be very judgmental with yourself. It's just a matter of finding a baseline and seeing honestly where you're at so that you can work to transform and heal. And the more honest that a person will be with themselves, if, if, if a person allows themselves to get to that microscopic truth, they will heal through some of this uh, emotional um, slavery that they might yes. be in at this point so that they can move more towards the emotional freedom. Yes, exactly. I mean, one of the qualities that I talk about in the book is non-defensiveness. When you look at yourself or when somebody else points something out, 
you know, instead of descending and saying, oh, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not, you know, to just honestly breathe, center, and intuitively tune in. And am I really afraid? It's important for you to know. And what am I afraid of? Or am I, am I lonely? And, you know, what are the causes? You know, or am I frustrated all the time? You know, what, how frustrated am I? How worried am I? You know, we need to have this little checklist so that we can, first of all, identify where we're at and then compassionately work to transform and grow. But you have to start where you're at, but non-defensively and just gently and lovingly, you know, okay, you're afraid. I mean, one thing that I, I wrote about in the fear chapter was my fear of abandonment that I worked with for many, many years and continue to, though it's, knock on wood, much improved. You see, but that's intense. Anyone who has dealt with a fear of abandonment, you know, there's so many things that can trigger it in life. Somebody doesn't call. Um, someone doesn't show up for the holidays. You know, you break up with a, you know, a, a lover or something. You know, so anything can trigger it. And so I wrote about how I really worked with that, you know, using the techniques in the book to, you know, help help heal, basically. So now my buttons aren't as easily pushed, and boy, is that liberation. But I bring that up only to say whatever your fear is, work on it without shame, without, you know, any kind of judgment. Just look at it as this is your life's challenge, the spiritual challenge, this fear. Look at it that way. You know, that's one thing I tell people in the book, whatever you're going through, always look at it as how can this help me spiritually grow instead of what the linear mind says is, God, this is tormenting me, I want out. Well, and I like another point that you said, and, and that was that you had this fear of abandonment and you still work with that somewhat. And a lot of people feel like, you know, the people that write the books, the ones that are up there speaking, they've worked through all their stuff, they're enlightened, they have nothing else to deal with, they have life. <laughs> and and that's it's okay to still have to work through things and understand that we're going through different layers and levels. Yeah, and I'd like to point out that what you just said is a fantasy. You know, if you're a human being, the spiritual work is ongoing till the moment that you, you leave here, and there's always more challenges. So that's why we're here. And so just because somebody wrote a book or is a so-called authority on something, it doesn't mean that they don't have their own share of, of emotional issues to go through. You know, that, that's the whole point of being alive, but... The healers that I trust the most are aware of this and are working on their stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't trust anyone who says, oh, no, I'm, I'm done with fear. <laughs> exactly, exactly. We have to be willing to, to be okay being human and know that that's just as holy and, uh, and, and that that is part of the beauty of our imperfection. Yes, and it's acceptance of who we are. You know, the human being is is uh, imperfect. That's by nature and has flaws. That's, you know, our shortcomings or areas of, of challenges to work with. That's, that's the point of us being here, you know, is to um, heal the darkness within so that, you know, inner, I present emotional freedom as an inner peace movement. And when we achieve some semblance of inner peace, we radiate it and we affect our friends, our community, our, our pets, our plants, our you know, in the larger, you know, sphere of the world. And then we can create outer peace. But everybody who's human, we're all a family, number one, on an intuitive level, all connected. No, You know, there's no such thing as them, you know, or us versus them. There is no them. It's only us and we. Um, but we're all working on it. But hopefully what I'm saying in this book is that we mindfully deal with the darker parts of ourselves and work to transform it. Because the way I'm defining a good human being is somebody who knows their negative side but chooses to come from their positive side. You see, somebody who doesn't know their negative side or denies it is dangerous. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And one other point that I really liked was when you talked about utilizing this fear and turning it into something else. Uh, and going even deeper, we're allowed awarenesses of how this does affect our physiology. It is Emotions have a psychology to them. We are changing our bodies when we hang on to some of these negative emotions. We are, and in each chapter on the emotions, I talk about how to transform the biology of the emotion, uh, the spirituality, You know how to frame it from a spiritual standpoint, how to work with the energy, and also to backtrack to the psychology and find out where our fears came from or our jealousy and envy or our, 
our loneliness, you know, if we're these, uh, you know, emotional, I have a chapter on emotional types, and one of the types I talk about is the empath, somebody who is an emotional sponge who absorbs the energy of people around them. And so if you were an empath as a child and you had an anxious or depressed mother, most likely you took that on. You just absorbed that. And so part of the work with emotional freedom in the book is to let go of what your parent, what is your parents, and, and really intuitively get to know who you are versus what you've taken on from them. And until you realize you're an empath, you have no idea what you've taken on from them, and you assume it's your own. I mean, I've, I've worked with so many patients who once they were able to distinguish that and let go of what was their parents because they absorbed into their own being, it, there was such a lightning and a freedom that happened in their own selves. And in that, when we look at that, when children taking on the emotions of others and they grow up not even realizing they've done that, can we also use our children as a barometer? If, if, if I have a small child and that child is acting angry, can I use that as a barometer if I'm not personally aware of my own anger, that maybe that's what they're feeling and they're showing it to me? Uh, possibly. You always need to ask yourself that question. And the best thing that parents can do is do this work in the book because... When you deal with your own anger, and it's not just hanging out, you know, there everywhere for your children to see, you know, un, unaccounted for anger, then you're an incredible role model as a parent because the children energetically and, and psychologically sense that, you know, it's safe to be around you and that you are working with your anger, and that's something very healing to transmit to a child or you're working with your fear it doesn't have to be completely healed. I want to make that point for you to be a good parent or, or give off good energy. Just the fact that you're in the healing process gives you good energy. And the fact that we have emotions and that we allow ourselves to become aware of them, we can discover whether we're empaths, whether we are allowing vampires to overtake us, or whether we're being the emotional vampire. Join me in a few minutes and we'll speak to Dr. Judith Orloff about emotional vampires. Be Extraordinary. Seventh Wave Network. Have you seen 1111? Do you wonder why certain numbers keep showing up in your life? 11, 111, 22, 33, 444. People all over the world are seeing 1111 and learning the language of universal communication. Subscribe to 1111 Magazine today, www.1111mag.com. 1111 Magazine is a bi-monthly print publication that offers a rich, multi-sensory experience. As you engage with experts and topics of consciousness, become enlightened, empowered, and energized so you live a passionate and authentic life of conscious choices. 1111 Magazine, a daily staple for lifting the mindset, discovering the heart, and stepping into conscious living. 1111 Magazine. Order now at www.1111mag.com. 1111mag.com. Are you looking for Life's Balance? Look no further than 7th Wave Network. We're bringing you Life's Balance with Shaman M. Let Melody McBride take you on a unique listening experience. You'll explore the world of alternative health. Learn about the many facets of healing. Preventative lifestyles from children to seniors will be discussed on the show. Listen for Life's Balance with Shaman M. Broadcast live every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time and 2 p.m. Eastern Time on 7th Wave Network. It's the healthy side of life. Let peace and balance be yours. And the results indicate your child has neuroblastoma. There's evidence of metastasis. We need to schedule a bone we'll need to perform a surgical Urinary biopsy. Urinary biopsy. Urinary biopsy. Urinary biopsy. Urinary biopsy. After you hear your child has cancer, chances are you don't hear anything else. CureSearch.org connects you to the most comprehensive research and advice on childhood cancer and to other families who know exactly what you're going through. CureSearch.org. You're not as alone as you feel. Brought to you by CureSearch and the Ad Council. Listening on a higher dimension. Seventh Wave Network. You are listening to 1111 Talk Radio. If you'd like to join today's discussion, please call in toll free at 1 866 472 5795. Again, 1 866 472 5795. 
You may also send an email to info at believesc.com. Now back to 1111 Talk Radio with Simran Singh. Dr. Judith Orloff is the author of Emotional Freedom, and you can learn more about the different workshops, the different lectures, and other types of materials that she's producing on her website, which is www.drjudithorloff.com. Also, you can attend an Awakening Intuition and Emotional Freedom workshop June the 5th through June the 7th at Kripalu Institute, and that's kripalu.org. Are you an emotional vampire? Do you avoid, do people avoid you or glaze over during a conversation? Are you self-obsessed? Are you negative? Do you gossip or badmouth people? Are you critical or controlling? Are you a drama queen or a king? Do you corner people and tell them your life story? Are you an emotional black hole that won't get help? These are some of the questions that you asked, Dr. Orloff, in the section that speaks about emotional vampires. And those are pretty powerful questions that a lot of people might not realize they may have yeses to in certain degrees. Oh, yes. Um, and, you know, again, the whole quality of non-defensiveness that I talk about is, is very important, just an honest inquiry of where we're at. Uh, there's a section in, in the book, Are You an Emotional Vampire? You know, how do you know? And I just want to say we all have that tendency to become a complainer or become a drama queen or king or um, become a victim. We all have that tendency, but the thing is with emotional freedom, we can catch ourselves quickly and shift out of it and accept feedback from mates or loved ones who are saying, you know, you have been complaining a lot lately and not staying in the solution. You know, you have been really controlling and telling me what to do all the time. You know, and so when you get that kind of feedback, there's a part of you, of course, that wants to say, oh, no, I'm not. But, you know, that part, that's all right. But then try and go a little deeper in terms of letting it intuitively settle in terms of whether it is true or not. You always have to ascertain that. Um, you know, I was going through a period, I, I live in a condominium building, and I was, you know, it's very difficult to have a condominium board and, and so forth. It was, it's very, very frustrating at times. So I was going on and on and on you know, with a friend of mine about this, and she finally said to me, she goes, you know, I really don't want to hear about this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, being on the other end of limit setting, because I'm good at setting limits, you know, it's kind of you're taken aback. You know, what do you mean you don't want to hear about it? But I was so happy that she said that, you know, because it really stopped me in my tracks. I really was getting quite indulgent about it. So, um, you know, we have to be able to do that with one another. Uh, and I appreciated that she said that to me. So, you know, we all can, my point is we all can slip into it. But to catch ourselves... And then there's the issue of other people who are emotional vampires. And I go through different types in the book and what to do about them because not all people are open to seeing that they are emotional vampires. Sometimes they are, and that's fantastic. Um, But most of the time, they really don't even know what they're doing. They're not aware of their behavior. It's not conscious. And sometimes if you're in front of an emotional vampire and you're not really conscious of it, there are certain symptoms, so to speak, that you'll start to, to feel. And you list some in the book, that the eyelids get heavy or you feel put down or the mood takes a nosedive or you want to binge on carbs, things like that. You feel like taking a nap. Yes. yes. That's a big one. But yes. what people do and what a lot of my patients do is they think they're neurotic, they're being neurotic, and they try and talk themselves out of it, which is the mind. It's a linear mind, but everyone... Be aware of that or beware of that so that you can trust your experience of the person. Now, part of emotional freedom is learning how to trust your intuitive experience of the world and not have other people talk you out of it. All right, it's important to get feedback sometimes, but you just weigh what feels right intuitively and what doesn't feel right. Now, that's the the power of intuition in dealing with your emotions so you're not a pushover, um, but on the other hand, you know, you listen to other people's opinions if you want to, but you weigh and, and balance them intuitively what feels right. Um, but with emotional vampires, you need to trust your experience. If you're feeling exhausted around someone, it doesn't matter if all your friends like them. It doesn't matter or your parents like them. Uh, you need to trust your experience. I've had patients who found the perfect mate. You know, they're good-looking and they're attractive and they're smart and they're funny and they're 
sensitive and all, all this other stuff, but energetically they feel exhausted around them for some reason. You see, and sometimes it's, it's mysterious. You don't know. But you want to have energetic chemistry with someone. You don't want to be around somebody who drains your energy for whatever reason. And it's not healthy to get into long-term relationships when you have a negative energetic chemistry. So that's an, an important thing to put on your checklist when you're with new friends, new relationships, new jobs. You know, how do you react energetically around it? That's all that matters to me is how do you react, not how what other people, how they react. So I, I encourage everyone to trust themselves more when it comes to this. And there, there are certain types of emotional vampires. You list them as the narcissist or the victim, the controller or the criticizer. There are several different types, and they also vary in degree, and, and, and that's how you can start to understand whether this is a good relationship, a, a serving relationship to oneself, or it's something that we need to create a boundary around. Exactly, exactly. But you need to, first of all, take an inventory of the emotional vampires in your life and just be very honest. This isn't judging them. This isn't anything except for making a list. And really go through everybody, um, who gives you energy and who saps you. That's the first step. And then the second step is identify what which type they are. So go through in the book and see, are they a narcissist? Are they a controller? Are they a criticizer? You know, are they a borderline personality who, who turns people against one another? Uh, you really have to see what type they are and then use specific strategies to um, deal with them. Some energy vampires you can get away from, others you can't. I mean, I, once I was going to a woman who did my hair, and all through the time I was with her, she'd talk about sags and wrinkles and aging. And you know, by the time I left, I felt like a wreck. And so I, I said to myself, why, why do you keep going back to this? You, know, you need to be with somebody who you leave feeling beautiful. And so I, I said goodbye to that person, and I was able to eliminate her. You know, uh, and, you know, from my life, not not hostily, I just, you know, didn't go back there. And I found now I go and get my hair done, I feel like, you know, I'm totally gorgeous when I leave, which is what I want. And that's all right. We, totally we can all right. and choose who are in our lives. And it really is all right. It is all right. And you, you part of emotional freedom is uh, empowering yourself by making those kind of choices because you want to have positive people in your life. And when you can't, when you have a family member who's an emotional vampire or a friend, or you have to make a decision, if I want them in my life, then I have to use these strategies with them to better the situation. All right. And part, one of those strategies is learning how to set healthy limits and boundaries with them. You know, for instance, if someone is in victim mode and is complaining, poor me, poor me, without solutions, so whenever you offer a solution, they say, yes, but... It is not a healthy thing to keep talking to them for two hours on the phone about this. It isn't. It'll exhaust you, and it's enabling them. And so part of how to deal with this type of emotional vampire is to set healthy limits by saying, you know, I love you, you're my friend, but I can only listen for a couple minutes, you know, if you uh, don't want to get into solutions. All right? And you have to keep repeating yourself. Saying it once isn't sufficient because they'll lapse, you see, and, and the, they might rebel, too. I mean, they might say, what kind of friend are you? You won't listen to me. You've got to be prepared for that one. And then you say, I'm a wonderful friend. I really love you, but I'm really taking care of my energy, and I'm happy to talk to you about solutions, but just not. I can't go around in circles. It's just I, I don't want to hear about it anymore. So, you know, that's, that's how you say it. But the, the secret is that you say it with a kind but firm tone. You don't say it nagging. You don't say it blaming or criticizing. You just keep your cool when you say it, and you've got to be the master of your tone. I, I talk about this in the book because I believe that the tone of how you express yourself has a lot of energetic power. All right, you know when you're being snippy or judgmental. You know you can't get away with it, really. You know, and, and you know you have to come from a calm, centered place before you even deal with an emotional vampire, because in the heat of the moment not the time to deal with it unless you can calm yourself quickly, you know, with, which with emotional freedom you learn to do. You and know, with emotional is. freedom is where you get to your most authentic place, where you can speak to people in that calm tone or that very placid way of speaking where you're hearing in yourself as well as the other person. Right. 
Absolutely, but that takes a lot of practice because the old paradigm is, you know, somebody's trying to control you and tell you how to be and feel. And if that's a button of yours, you're going to be start starting to get irate and, and, and boiling over. All right, and so you have to learn to work with that so that you can gain your own power and realize no one else has control over you. It's up to you to believe in yourself. People can try and control you, but if you don't have a belief in yourself or, or don't buy into it, then you know then they're going to have all the power over you. So you work with yourself with some of the psychological techniques, but then you go back to the controller, breathe, center, you know, and say, you know, I think I'd rather do it my way, but thanks. You know, but you don't get into it with them. You see, that's what I'm talking about with emotional freedom. You don't get into it with them because emotional vampires get energy from the interaction. If they see your buttons are pushed and you're going for it, that's what feeds them. All right, that's a very basic premise to understand. And if you're not giving them that juice, then they're not going to become interested in you anymore, which is good, you know, in terms of that behavior pattern. And of all of these different emotional vampire types, is there any that just really cannot be um, dealt with or cannot be lived with? And I'm going to have you answer that when we come back from the break. Intuition plays an indispensable role in self-diagnosis, pain control, immune response, and recovery from acute and chronic illness. As you nurture your intuitive healing capacity, your body then provides the energy needed to create holistic methodologies that assist you in creating breakthroughs through in anxiety, panic, depression, and other emotional blockages. This can be your bridge between traditional and complementary medicine, and emotional freedom is a step to that. We are with Dr. Judith Orloff, and we'll be right back. Awakened Media for a Transforming World. Seventh Wave Network. Just what is Skills USA? Skills USA specifically prepares you for the workforce. Skills USA empowers students to connect with a network of people. Skills USA allows students to connect with business and industry, to manage their education, and to really get a feel of the real world. Find out more on the web at skillsusa.org. Experience higher love, an archangelic journey into ascended joy and authentic living. Your hosts, Sri Ram Ka and Kira Ra, will assist you to open your heart, expand your love, and be ever-present with true joy. Your journey with Sri and Kira begins right here on the 7th Wave Network with Higher Love, Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. Have you seen 1111? Do you wonder why certain numbers keep showing up in your life? 11, 111, 22, 33, 444. People all over the world are seeing 1111 and learning the language of universal communication. Subscribe to 1111 Magazine today. www.1111mag.com 1111 Magazine is a bi-monthly print publication that offers a rich, multi-sensory experience. As you engage with experts and topics of consciousness, become enlightened, empowered, and energized so you live a passionate and authentic life of conscious choices. 1111 Magazine, a daily staple for lifting the mindset, discovering the heart, and stepping into conscious living. 1111 Magazine. Order now at www.1111mag.com. 1111mag.com. The new home for visionary positive change. Seventh Wave Network. You are listening to 1111 Talk Radio. If you'd like to join today's discussion, please call in toll free at 1 866 472 5795. Again, 1 866 472 5795. You may also send an email to info at believesc.com. Now back to 1111 Talk Radio with Simran Singh. Sometimes the egoic mind lets us believe that 
fear and intuition are the same thing, and they're not. There are signs of reliable intuition, and that can be seen by having information conveyed neutrally and unemotionally, feeling right in your gut, having a compassionate, affirming tone, and giving crisp, clear impressions that are seen first, then felt. Dr. Judith Orloff, author of Emotional Freedom, utilizes intuition along with many other methods to take a person to that place of emotional freedom. Intuition is such an important part of it, Dr. Orloff. Oh, it is. Listening to that precious inner wisdom. The mind is as wonderful as it is, and certainly as a doctor, I, you know, I've been trained in, in terms of medical school and my psychiatric residency to revere and, and honor the analytic mind, which I do, but it can only see so much. And intuition allows you to see, you know, so much more and into infinity. So we need to balance both the mind and intuition. So it's very important to use both. Unfortunately, in Western culture, we're very intellectually oriented and intuition has receded, you know, into the back seat. And now, you know, in my work, I want to just put it in the forefront again. We must listen, 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 listen in the moment fresh, new, exciting, you know, every moment, seeing seeing everything from a, a fresh point of view. Intuition, you have to be in the moment. If you're anywhere else, you, you can't tune in. There are people across the world that suffer from loneliness uh, that appear to be very engaged but are feeling very, very separate. Is loneliness a call to get more connected and to tap into that intuition? Yes. Well, I love the chapter I wrote on loneliness because I've experienced a lot of different kinds of loneliness throughout my life. So I've, I've really have, have been exploring it. And loneliness, I present it as three reasons for it. Um, one is that you're disconnected from other people in terms of the social network. Two is that you're disconnected with yourself, which is a big one. And three is that you're disconnected with spirit. And that spiritual kind of loneliness is so important to look at because as a child I always felt like an alien here on Earth and I I would be in my front yard and wish that a spaceship would come and land on my front yard and take me to my true home because I felt lonely for my people and my true home. Mm -hmm. Um, And I always felt that way. Um, And part of that is that I was yearning for my spiritual home. And it's very different being in the earth plane in terms of just the the mass here and the denseness of energy. It's very different than the spiritual plane, you know, which is or the non-earth plane. So part of loneliness is bringing a sense of heaven and bringing a sense of, uh, of that deep spiritual home into your home here on earth through meditation, through intuition, through opening up to the presence and making that an everyday part of your life, that helps to quell loneliness. And certainly in my psychiatric training, I was never taught that. But with so many people who don't feel like they belong here, you know, or feel kind of this isn't their home, so many people have told me that. One of the solutions is to connect spiritually deeper and deeper um, in meditation and just in your life so you can have that sense of comfort here. That's so important. And and to find spiritual soulmate friends who you can communicate with and talk to so you can have that resonance going and feel a sense of home. I mean, even though, you know, I I, I really that's part of my life now and I love being here, I I don't feel this is my primary home. I don't, but that's okay, you know, because I really enjoy being here and I love feeling the connection. And love is the connector, by the way, here. You know, love between people. The more love you can feel, the more at home you can feel. And really the greater connection we have to others can only result if we're willing to connect to ourselves, if we're willing to value ourselves enough to take that time to be still or meditate or be very mindful of little things, even if it's like a walking meditation or a dishwashing meditation, to just really be with oneself. I like that, or taking out the garbage meditation. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm really into small things, you know, into bringing light, being aware of the light in small things not bringing light there. There's light everywhere. But being able to see it in small things, yes, in the connection with the self, ah, it's so mixed, you know, for people. It, it's it's terrifying and it's magnificent. I mean, when the first time anybody closes their eyes to go into meditation and they start feeling what's inside, <laughs> it's, 
quite a surprise. Ah, you want to jump out. You know, a lot of people have difficulty meditating because of that. It, it, but, you know, you have to get used to what's inside of yourself. It's quite powerful and tumultuous and, and magnificent. and It's everything. So it takes some getting used to the self. And that that's where you really lead yourself down the path which is service to the heart. And that is your title of your afterword. It's Living in Service to the Heart, the Blessing of Emotional Freedom, which I found such a powerful title. Mm, yes, that's the essence of everything. It is, emotional freedom is living in service to the heart, being loving and compassionate with yourself as you're on this journey, first and foremost with yourself, not beating, beating, beating. You know, being loving and compassionate and then connecting through the heart, with all sentient beings, with friends, with family, with flowers, with animals, with the sky, with the earth, everything is to connect, connect, connect. You know, um, Ian Forrester, I start a, one of the loneliness chapter out with a quote from Ian Forrester, to, to connect, only connect. You see, connection is, is one of the most important things in my life, and the connect door is the heart. That's where the the depth and the wonderful connections come from. And we are here with Dr. Judith Orloff and her book, Emotional Freedom. It has been a pleasure, Dr. Orloff, to have you here and have all of your wonderful wisdom and insight into this book. So thank you for being here. You're very welcome. It's not about just love. It's not just about allowing yourself a little bit. It's how much love can you stand? How much will you allow? Can you dive right into that sea of love and pour it all over you? We have to allow ourselves to step into our emotions and fully embrace them, whatever they are, and be compassionate, just as Dr. Judith Orloff has stated. I hope you'll join me next week when my guest is Patricia Bish, and we will be speaking about freedom from food. I'm Simran Singh with 1111 Magazine, and and I will talk to you next week on 1111 Talk Radio. Thank you for stepping into the doorway of conscious choice with 1111 Talk Radio. Please join host Simran Singh again next Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time for another enlightening edition here on the 7th Wave Network. Remember, shift happens.